Yvonne? Yeah. Um, one of the things that you said here is that the soul can only become unified if both halves accept the complete expression of self. What, what does that mean? Well, to become unified, both halves need to accept the complete expression of who they are as a, as a whole, right? That, that's the way you become unified. So, so now I'm starting to talk about stuff that's in the 36, the yes. transition between the 36 and the 35th spheres. No wonder it didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> and, and, it, and a lot of it's not going to make any sense at all to you until you, you can grasp the soul itself and actually connect to it and so forth. But, but the reality is the unified, what I've been calling for you, the unified condition, which is the soul union state, is actually already in everyone, but there's no awareness of it. You follow me? There's no self-awareness of it. There's a separation due to injuries, but also due to the lack of awareness. And, and what you need to do is go through a whole heap of spirits. Now, after you become at one with God, you start going through a whole heap of experiences where you become more and more aware of the, you could call it the, the desire or the actualization of yourself, as an individual, and that the more and more aware of yourself as an individual you become, of course, the more. And and when I talk about individual, I'm talking about this one soul as one individual. And the more aware you become, the more you act as that individual the whole time. Now it requires both halves do that in order to be completely aware of the union condition. Can't it can't happen without the reception of God's love either. You can't actually do it without God's love. The reason why is the soul is incapable, has been created in such a way that it's incapable of entering a union condition. Right? Remember, um, the best way to put it is like this. Here's our soul, and this is now quite some complex uh, ideas, but here's our soul in its, in its created state unaware of itself. You follow? Now, because it's unaware of itself, there's really a gap, isn't there, between the two halves because they're not aware of each other. The lack of awareness has caused this gap. But it's not just the lack of awareness that causes the gap. The reality is that God's love also needs to be experienced in order for this soul to completely join. So, so a soul in the sixth fear condition, which is perfected in natural love, the two of the two halves work together frequently and quite frequently, um, but they are still not joined because they have not received God's love in order to grow to the other parts of the stages that are required for the soul to have a full awareness of its, of its full condition. Do you follow me? So they basically live in a state of, of a gap still, even though they are together, they're physically together, but they live in a gap. Uh, with, there's a gap between the two halves. This unified condition as an in an aware state requires the reception of God's love. Not only to, to the point of at one moment with God, but also it requires a number of other transitions. Every seventh sphere there is another transition. Different, uh, there's different attributes, I suppose you could say, of God's nature that you, that you enter in each condition, and each condition allows you to become aware of what is uh, what needs to be done in order to remove the blockages for the union state and 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 by the way this soul in this state really is like this if you could draw, draw it in terms of uh, in some in a little bit of scale so it's like this does that make sense and then when it's in a six fear state it's really in reference to that it's really just like this And that's as far as it can go without God's love. It can't do anything further. And then it's got to make a number of transitions in terms of its emotional and awareness and experience, its ability to be sensitive to ever larger groups of emotional conditions and, and to get to that stage, the final union condition. Do you follow? Yeah. So it's like when you see these souls in development uh, from the union state, it's like um, looking at a, like when you first see the souls of, of the first incarnation, it's like a little speck. And when you see it 
like this, the six sphere state, it's like sort of not much bigger than the spec. It's, it's uh, you know, probably a factor of 10 bigger than that spec, you know, in terms of its condition. And that, that's the natural condition. And the soul is unable to expand beyond that condition without God's love. So it can't union. It can't be aware of its union, a unified state in that condition ever because of the different problems that it has in that state. One of the biggest, it's still committing sin. The biggest sin, which is the rejection of God's love. So, so it's still committing sin, so it caught, it's still lack of awareness. It's the, it's, the, it's the reception of God's love that allows the soul to continually expand and therefore become more and more aware of its condition until eventually it unifies. Do you follow? And, and this state is like, you could think of it like, souls in, in the unified state look like, if you, if you can conceive, that's the size of a soul when it first comes to earth. The soul in the unified state looks like earth. <laughs> so, so do you see the difference? Like, it's hu huge changes of capacity and ability and power and so forth. Yeah. Um, when you talked about individualization, I think you said that um, the individualization process is not complete until both halves have incarnated. Uh, yes, that's right? true. Because um, it needs both halves to incarnate before both halves are in the process of. So that means the conception process has to occur for both halves. Yes. Yes. Once that conception process occurs for both halves, the soul is now individualized. Does that does individualization indivi is complete? Okay. Does individualization mean anything other than that's the word used to describe that state? That's all it means. Okay. Yeah. Just a, and in fact, in your notes, you notice that I've said uh, at incarnation, awareness of my real self is completely undeveloped. So my nature and personality exist, but in a potential state of expression. My will exists, but in a potential state of expression. I'm innocent. I'm influenced by the will of others. So, and I have no awareness of the other half of myself, usually at this state, right? And so these are all parts of uh, being in the initial state. And, and but the reality is, I, when I have, I as soon as I arrive on the planet in conception, in the conceived state, I am now individualized, and my heart and both halves have to go through that place to complete the individualization process. So you could say the individualization process begin of the complete soul begins when one half conceive, is conceived. It's now joined to two bodies, and it ends when the other half is conceived and joins the two bodies. And the gap between those two particular events may be anything from a few months or no months at all right the way through to a few years, you know, 5, 10, 15 years. That process is then complete. Thank you. Yep.